we're quote unquote wasting energy, or even though we know that we have a, a very good solution right now, we sort of um, quote unquote waste a little bit of energy by, by creating mutations in the hope that uh, maybe they will be advantageous if this landscape changes. Okay, so how would we quantify complexity? Now this is actually, I mentioned at the beginning of class, this is somewhat of a deeper subject and uh, it's too much to talk about I think right now, but what I'll do is I'm gonna introduce a couple metrics that can be used to uh, define you know, how complex is a system. I've got two complex systems, or I should say, let's say two systems. I, I go through the definitions or the attributes and say, okay, yes, the system is complex. Then I can say, okay, well, if I have two of those, how would I, how would I compare those or how would I rank order them in terms of their complexity? Well, one thing you might imagine is that if I write down all the interconnections or show all the interconnections of the agents in the system, this could be a physical connection or it could be a, a communication. It could be a, in, in, um, in chemical systems, like I'll talk about mushrooms, but mushrooms or other types of biological systems are actually these communication paths are chemicals. It could be hormones, it could be um, other, other types of uh, organic compounds. But network graphs, um, this is actually a picture of showing all of the, so obviously, if, if you look at this, say this graph down here in the lower right, this is showing uh, connections not between every node, but with, with a few nodes. If I, now these, these um, what makes network graphs somewhat difficult to, to manage is that you know, this is a, a graph here of only 16 nodes. But if you draw all of the connections between all nodes, you get, well, what looks like a pretty drawing. I remember these as a kid, the spirograph things, but you can get a lot of connections very quickly with a, with a small number of nodes. Um, this one, so what I'm showing here on the, on the lower left, this should remind you maybe of, I don't know, of a fractal or, or growth of a city, or say, if, you, if you're an electrical engineer, this might look like the growth of a distribution electrical network. Um, it turns out that one of the most fascinating uh, quote unquote simple system in, in biology that you can study that is complex and fascinating are mushrooms. I talked about mushrooms last time. It's just a very fascinating subject. You should study about it. Um, these are, you know, they, they're typically they were studied uh, by botanists because they were thought of as, as well, they, well, I've got to be careful here. They're, they're thought of as plants, or they've been they've thought been thought of as plants in the past, but they're actually closer to animals. Um, there's a there's a researcher named Paul Steinitz you may know of, but he, you look him up on YouTube. He he talk, he's uh, also, he has kind of like almost mystical uh, interpretations of mushrooms, but they are uh, they're so important in the ecosystem. So they 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 put out these layers of, of webs on on um, on forest floors. And what's so fascinating about them is they're almost like, you know, in the human body, there, there are, um, you know, your, your lymphatic system and your liver, these are all systems that essentially detox your body. So anything you bring in, including alcohol, it's processed by your liver. So mushrooms are sort of the, you know, the sponges and the, the detoxification um, uh, system, subsystem in, in an ecological system. So very fascinating how these grow. Uh, these are called mycelia and they're, uh, they, they sort of come out as networks and they're sort of very strong fibers. Anyway, they, they break down of a lot of uh, organic polymers, very important in the overall ecosystem. I think it's fascinating how they, how they expand like a, like a network and they, they share information via uh, chemical signaling. Okay. So, Couple metrics for networks. You can, if you're defining or, or comparing two networks, uh, you can define average degree of nodes in the network, meaning average number of nodal connections. Obviously, in this case, uh, this would have a, a higher average node uh, node connections versus this one. Um, and then, and a lot a lot of computer programs will give you this mean path length. So that's the average distance or the number of edges between nodes. So how far would you have to go? to go from, like in this case, this is like a hub and spoke model. A lot of systems will naturally um, gravitate towards this, this model. Like for instance, um, the way that airline hubs are set up, 
you'll have hubs in like Denver or you'll have hubs in um, New York that's meant to decrease the mean path length between nodes, which could be say, um, you know, major, major, um, uh, uh, like points, points in the country around the world, rather than going individually to, to these various points in the graph, there'll be uh, central hubs. So that's the hub and spoke model. Um, so you can compare graphs in that way. Um, the other would be, suppose that I just wrote down or I, I, I drew um, a plot that showed for every node, how many connections does that node have? So in the examples that I showed, obviously this would just be a straight line because all of these nodes have the same number of connections. But I can imagine in a, in a different uh, network, like maybe this one, um, that plot would be irregular. And what happens is that some, some network graphs and very important types of, like for instance, social systems uh, follow what's called the, the power law. And what that means is that a very small number of nodes, almost like the hub and spoke model, but a very small number of nodes have a very large number of, of nodes connected to it. And um, most nodes have very few connections. 